everyone watching, as some of you might remember, my name is Andrew. I am a National Geographic Explorer working to support young people across the planet who are overcoming challenges in their lives and solving problems facing their community. Uh, this work has led me to speak with hundreds of young people all over the world. Um, I've spoken with folks who have met with presidents, uh, changed laws, and even one teenager who saved an entire species of turtles. Um, but through all these conversations, there's something that I've noticed. Almost every single young person who's out there changing the world has had to overcome a significant challenge in their life, usually one that's completely out of their control. What sets a leader apart is that they refuse to let these barriers define them, but rather see these challenges as an opportunity to prove what's possible. And that's exactly the way our guest Kartik approaches life. Kartik is blind. Uh, this means it's challenging for him to see in the way most people do. However, as an advocate and technologist who has not let his disability impede the pursuit of his personal and professional goals, Kartik has inspired and empowered dozens of others around the world uh, with disabilities to be successful tech professionals as he has become. As the first blind student in India to pursue a science tech, uh, education in high school, Kartik has advocated to change the rules so that blind students across the country can pursue sciences in high school. So without further ado, let me introduce my friend Kartik Swani. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for that very kind introduction. Absolutely, Karthik. I am, you know, have been inspired by you for, uh, you know, ever since I, I first met. And I, and I have to ask, as a 24, uh, barely 25 year old, uh, serving as an engineer at one of the world's largest tech companies in Microsoft, while simultaneously building an organization to support young people, um, You've done a lot, but I want to actually start from the beginning. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like for you growing up and how you approached uh, the fact that you saw a little bit differently than some of your classmates? Yeah, uh, it was difficult, uh, to be honest. Um, and I think it's, it, it all started uh, with my parents having no idea of how to support me as a, as a blind student, as a blind kid, uh, with having uh, no experience at all. Um, I got lucky in some ways because uh, they were able to meet a mentor who was able to um, tell them about this uh, institution called the National Association for the Blind in Delhi in India, uh, which is where my journey began. Um, and this was a special school for the blind where I picked up a lot of the blindness specific skills. Um, so for example, Braille or how can I work on a computer, for example. Um, and that was a very protected environment because I was, you know, I was basically being trained by people who knew how blind people work. Uh, they had all the information. All of my peers were blind, so that was great. And that was like the you know the first couple, I think two or three years of my life uh, of my formative education uh, was really awesome. Um, but then actually when I was about seven years old is when the challenges kind of began where uh, I was mainstreamed into this regular school uh, and and there there was no one other, other student who was blind and the teachers did not know how to work with a blind student there was just no knowledge and I think I just was not prepared at that age to be able to explain to people that oh yeah you know I work differently or I need content in different formats or I cannot just read the board uh, in the classroom um, and so I remember the first couple of days were extremely challenging. I wouldn't talk to anyone. I would be super hesitant. But that's kind of where my parents came in. And I think they gave me this. They said this one thing to me that has been like the mantra of my life ever since. And they were like, no matter what happens, you've got to be involved in everything that your peers are going to do. And this includes even the most visual of experiences and activities. And so, for example, when when other students would be coloring and painting in a, in a painting class, um, my mom would not let me just sit there and be like, hey, yeah, I can't do it because I'm blind. And so I'm just going to sit in one corner and just kind of like, you know, observe my other peers do their own thing. The idea was, how can we adapt? How can we do things differently? How can we innovate to try and see how I can be 
participating in some capacity in those visual classes as well. And so what she would do, for example, in that case, what she would stick like wool or thread and the outline and that I would feel it and I would I would color inside it. So I would still basically get a, a perspective on, OK, well, what colors are various objects in the world? Uh, you know, just the spatial understanding. Uh, she would often you know, bring in these objects and give me like an intuition of, OK, what is a circle? What is a triangle? And then what is a cylinder? What is a cone? And I think that information from a very young age was super useful for me later on uh, to really understand how the world works, how visual world works, because uh, I still had to you know, figure that out. Uh, I still had to very much understand that. Um, and more importantly, I had to develop this mindset that there will be challenges, there will be hurdles, there will be times when things will be visual and I will not be able to access it on an equal basis as my peers, but I don't have to give up. I have to figure out alternative ways with my parents, with my teachers, with my friends, with the community, and really make everything work, including, I still remember this, uh, going to a dance class and figuring that out. And I can tell you, I am terrible. I was terrible. I still am terrible at dancing, but yeah, I had to do that. Uh, so it was a very interesting journey. Uh, you know, challenges here and there, but overall, I think the attitude that my parents instilled in me from the very beginning, the kind of mindset really helped me through um, and have like a very quote unquote, a normal uh, childhood. Right, and the mindset is that while you might face some challenges in life, it is the creativity and the persistence and the resilience that you demonstrate in the face of those challenges uh, that decides whether or not you're able to overcome them. Uh, but Kartik, I also heard you say that your mother uh, was a really important uh, role model in your life and uh, that she helped uh, to make sure that uh, you had access to opportunities uh, despite the fact that you were blind. But you know, I, I do wanna talk a little bit about how you found your way into science, because I think some of the people watching might think of science and STEM as a more kind of complicated topic and one that someone who is blind might have some challenges in terms of and getting into it. So can you talk to us a little bit about how you found your way to science and, and some of the barriers that you faced along the way? Yeah, um, so it actually all started when I was in the second grade and I would see my siblings uh, work on a computer and, you know, play games and listen to music and do all that kind of stuff. And obviously I wasn't able to do any of that because it was all visual. And, you know, that was the time when I would think to myself, hey, would I ever be able to use this thing? You know, it's such a barrier and they can they can access whatever information is available. Uh, but things really changed for me uh, when I learned about screen readers. So screen readers are uh, essentially a software that can read out whatever is there on your computer screen. So, you know, if you're on the desktop, it's going to read out every single icon on the desktop. If you're in the web browser, it's actually going to read out everything on a, in, in the web browser. Uh, and so I was introduced to that when I was around uh, seven or eight, and that kind of changed my life. And, and you know, now here I was, I could do everything. I could learn, uh, I could I could typeset, uh, you know, my assignments by myself. Um, I could do my homework by myself, do all of that by myself, but also, um, you know, uh, enjoy myself, uh, entertainment was key um, and so at that at that age I could play games uh, meet other people around the world uh, and of course just uh, you know um, get a lot of information from the web so that's kind of like where my interest in technology started developing and then um, slowly I started uh, understanding and learning more about programming because you know I was very intrigued about how someone was able to make the screen reader that changed my life and the lives of countless other people who were blind um, and, and, and that was also the time when my school was introducing very basic programming and logical thinking uh, in the form of, uh, I don't know if you remember this, back in those days you used to have logo uh, where you used to have like, you know, uh, a tur you would basically move around the, uh, move around and uh, the turtle and, you know, uh, visualize stuff. And that's kind of like how you started learning about programming. Um, and that's kind of like how it all started for me as well. I mean, you know, I started participating in computer quizzes, uh, web development, um, and uh, I would actually, um, sometimes, you know, even miss the classes that I didn't care about and go in a library and uh, read more about things like ethical hacking and explore how uh, technology more uh, works and stuff like that. So definitely by the time that I was 15 or so, I was pretty confident in what I wanted to do in the, uh, for the rest of my life. And I knew that it had to be science and it had to be technology. Um, but at that time, uh, when I was in the 10th grade, I learned that the Central Board of Education in India at that time did not allow blind students to pursue sciences in, in, in the 11th 
11th and 12th grades. And that was a prerequisite for pursuing any computer science based tech based uh, engineering course in the country. And so here I was uh, very confident about my choice, uh, having developed this interest in computer science for you know over the years, being told that I couldn't do it just because I was blind. Um, and that was very difficult. You know, some of the closest mentors that I had told me, hey, you're smart, just go do law, you know, do like, you know, become do like civil services, do anything else but computer science. And I was like, it, 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 that's, that's what I don't want to do. You know, my interest in computer science, just because I, I happen to be blind, why should I have to change what I'm interested in and study something that I'm not very passionate about? Uh, and so I decided to challenge the status quo at that time. Uh, it was very hard. Um, you know, I had to send in like a bunch of letters to the chairman of the board, um, had to do personal demonstrations. But I think, again, uh, technology came to my rescue and I was able to convince uh, the chairman using the technology of the abilities of people who are blind and visually impaired more broadly and was able to um, kind of help him understand how it would be possible, how technology has uh, empowered me to not only think about things that are otherwise visual, but also uh, represent a lot of that visual content in ways that others could understand. And so, you know, once I was was able to um, basically um, help him and address all the different concerns that he had. Uh, that's kind of like when they allowed and they issued this notification that now allows all blind students across India to pursue whatever classes they want, whatever subjects they want. And, and that kind of paved the way for me to pursue sciences. Uh, and that's kind of like how my journey started. Karthik, I love that. And I, you know, at risk of getting in trouble by Jeff, I just want to say rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> uh, and a rule that says people who are blind can't do science, that sounds exactly like the kind of rule that should be broken. Um, and I mean, you did it. I mean, you, you got a world-class education, you graduated from school, you're working at Microsoft. Um, you've accomplished so much, and I, and I think your story might be an inspiration uh, to some of the young people who are watching uh, who might have similar visions uh, for their own lives. So can you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing now uh, to support other people who are blind or who have other disabilities uh, to pursue careers in science? Yeah. Um, so it all started when I like when I came to the US. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, the Indian tech schools, I wasn't able to get the permission to join them uh, to take their entrance exams, uh, kind of you know, similar story as as the, uh, the the story with the board, uh, but I was fortunate to have mentors who advised me to explore international opportunities, and that's kind of like how I came to the U.S. One of the things that I realized here uh, that I wasn't just comfortable with is, hey, okay, I was able to come here, but what about the others? What about the countless uh, you know students who are blind in India who want to pursue STEM, uh, and and. You know, to help them is when I started a variety of initiatives and developed technologies to help them. Uh, one technology, for example, being you know um, converting, for example, a graph into sound so that they could uh, visualize that. Uh, but but again, um, the, the the core idea was how can I run a small mentorship program to start off with, where I could share my experiences, um, you know, being here in the U.S. and the kinds of technologies and strategies and adaptations and innovations that exist here uh, that could be used in India as well to make it easier for those students uh, to pursue STEM. So it basically started out with that, uh, with just kind of like, you know, small mentorship programs consisting of 15, 20 students. And so, um, by the way, a lot of those students actually then ended up graduating from uh, those uh, tech schools in India. I think that around 20 of them uh, have graduated over the years after me, after we were able to change the mindset of that school. Um, but most recently, uh, I've been able to expand on this and I run an organization called iSTEM, where our goal is to empower students and professionals with disabilities, particularly those um, who are interested in STEM or tech-based careers through technology, community, and support services. And so what we do is we use state-of-the-art artificial intelligence to uh, basically develop technology that can uh, reduce the barriers uh, that exist even today to try uh, and make it more approachable, to try and make uh, STEM more approachable for these students, uh, to provide them the resources with the ultimate goal of making sure that we can, you know, really move towards a more equitable world where everyone can pursue the classes that they want to take. Everyone can pursue the careers that they want to do. And so, you know, we develop this technology, we organize hackathons, technical training programs, mentorships, internships, webinars, uh, basically uh, a lot of community activities to get everyone involved, to, uh, to provide them the mentorship that they need, and ultimately to provide them the resources that they need to be successful in whatever they want to do. So that's kind of like what, uh, 
uh, we have what I've been trying to do. Um, you know, so far I think we've worked with around uh, 1,200 students around the world, uh, and just are so excited to expand that even more and reach out to more and more people around the world and get them a part of our community. And Karthik, what you embody is that leadership is not about what an individual does for themselves, but what an individual does to support and mobilize their community. And you really have committed yourself to doing that in a way that is inspirational. Um, we're running low on time. I know Jeff is getting mad at me, uh, but I did just want to provide an opportunity for you to share any last pieces of advice that you have for some of the young people watching, um, especially those who might also be different or have a disability and are concerned. Yeah, I think there are three main things that I want to quickly talk about. One of them is for everyone to be just open, and I think um, open to diversity, open to different experiences, uh, challenge, uh, you know, your uh, the stereotypes that you might have. And I think it's important to do that from a very young age. And so when you meet someone, uh, you know, who might have a disability or who might be different uh, than you in any way, I think take that as a learning opportunity, especially for uh, for children and, and for youth. I think that's, that's really important, and that's the only way that we can develop for everyone that I think is so important today uh, that we all need to just develop for everyone. We need, we, do, we need to make sure that we're accounting for everyone. Uh, the second thing is don't be afraid of challenges. Uh, you know, uh, challenges are probably the best sources of innovation in my view. The only reason I was able to innovate and develop software to help other people and develop my skills, even as a technologist today, uh, you know, for my day job is, is because, you know, I innovated under very difficult constraints. Uh, you know, I had to figure out how to visualize a graph when I did not have any resource in the world. Um, and, and so don't be afraid of them. Use challenges as a way to innovate, as a, as a way to really try and figure out what can be done. And I think uh, that is what's going to make you even more creative. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to talk about is sometimes, sometimes things just will not go the way you plan, but that's okay because oftentimes I think those are the opportunities that really give a direction to your life, you know, really give your life a vision, uh, which is how, which is what happened for me. You know, I, I couldn't get into the Indian tech schools uh, and then uh, that, and the challenges that I face as a student with a disability back home um, are the challenges that inspire me every single day at my job to really go and in innovate and make sure that no other student with disability around the world has to face the same challenges that I once did. And so that kind of, for example, has given a meaning to my life. And so uh, don't be despaired. Don't get afraid if things don't work out. Again, use it as a way to innovate and know that there will be something uh, that you can do given those challenges that will give your life a meaning, a direction and take that uh, and, and, and move forward and progress. That uh, is kind of what my message would be. Stay positive. Uh, look to the future and be confident in yourself. Uh, thank you, Karthik, so much uh, for joining us today and for sharing your story. Your story of overcoming uh, some of the physical challenges that you faced is inspiring, um, but I, I just want to point out, not unique. Every day, thousands of young people and maybe even some who are watching uh, overcome significant challenges in their pursuit of safety and happiness. And I want everyone watching uh, who might uh, who might be uh, along those lines um, to know that they're heroes, uh, each in your own right. So thank you very much. And Jeff, I will pass it back off to you.